This guitar is 3D printed, and while the hollow design is fairly unique, the real magic happens when you turn the lights off. For those of you who have an interest in both 3D printing and guitar, this is the project for you. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire build process from start to finish and give you a brief demo of how it sounds. If you've seen any of my past videos, you know that this isn't my first 3D printed guitar. In my previous two videos, I built similar Telecaster style guitars that I call Spider and River. And this time around, I'm building a hollow variant of that design. I've also designed a Les Paul style guitar and several variations of that design as well. All of these designs are available on my website, the3dprintzone.com, including the STL files to print the body of the guitar and a parts list for the other components such as the neck and electronics. And for those of you who can't make up your mind which guitar to build, check out my Patreon where you get unlimited access to a growing library of designs. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing to support the channel. And if you have any other questions or comments, please make sure to leave those in the comments section below. So without further ado, let's get started. To start, I created a CAD model of the main shape of the guitar body and then added features for the neck, cavities for the pickups and electronics, and features for the output jack and strap post. To print the body of the guitar, I split the model into five main sections so it could be printed on a vast majority of home 3D printers. In my case, I'm printing on a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which has a build area of 256 by 256 millimeters. I used Bamboo Studio to slice the models and printed the core in Bamboo Lab Silver PLA Basic and all of the main body parts in Bamboo Lab PLA Glow. It's very important that the inner core piece that mounts the pickup and bridge is very strong because it needs to withstand the tension of the guitar strings. For this reason, I used the built-in strength profile for the core and an infill percentage of 40. I also increased the number of perimeters to 6 to give it extra strength. Since the outer pieces did not see any significant load, I printed them in the standard profile with 25% infill and the default two perimeters, and I found that these values worked well to prevent the guitar body from flexing or warping. The jack cover, pickup cover, and three-way switch knob were all printed with 100% infill, and all parts were printed with 0.2 millimeter layer heights. Organic tree supports were used for any overhangs as they tend to break away from the parts easier compared to standard supports. To make things easier for you, I've included the 3MF files in the download, which includes all the print settings automatically preloaded. This table summarizes the print time and amount of filament used for each part. If you use the same settings, you can expect to use around 1.6 kilograms of filament and have a total print time of around 32 hours. The guitar body is designed to go together using dowel pins to align the parts during assembly and provide some stiffness to the body. The larger dowels are 10 millimeters in diameter and 50 millimeters long, and you can either use wooden or 3D printed parts. The assembly also uses smaller 3D printed dowels as well. As with my previous guitars, I'm using PVC cement and super glue to hold the parts together. I applied a coat of cement to both the dowel rods and plastic contact faces and then pushed the parts together. I then used wood clamps to tightly squeeze and hold the parts together to get a strong bond and then waited 24 hours to let it fully set. The next step in the build is my favorite part, pouring the resin. For a 3D printed body, resin offers added stiffness, helps to achieve a better weight, and overall just looks cool. Prior to pouring the resin, I recommend using liquid super glue to seal the gaps between the parts to prevent it from seeping between the seams. You also want to make sure your work surface is as level as possible to ensure the resin is flat when it cures. I chose a two-part epoxy made by JB Weld, which is a great option because it's both clear and rock solid when it fully cures. I used the CAD model to calculate the volume of resin needed and determined that this guitar requires about 160 milliliters of epoxy. Therefore, I used about 85 milliliters of part A and 85 milliliters of part B to ensure that I had enough material with a little extra just in case. I used black diamond mica powder to give the epoxy a sparkly colorful look to it. I chose to use green envy, iridescent blue, and silver pearl. 
To match the body of the guitar, I also mixed in Art and Glow mica powder, which glows in the dark. I chose to mix all the mica powder in the Part A resin and made sure to mix the powder really well so it was uniformly distributed. After adding Part B, I thoroughly mixed it all together to ensure the epoxy would cure properly. To me, it's super satisfying to pour the resin into the body and watch it fill, and in my opinion, this is where the guitar really starts to come to life. As with my previous designs, I chose to add a bit of a textured look by using a wooden stick to create a swirl pattern. I typically repeat this step a couple of times in the first hour or so to ensure the swirl will remain present as it cures. For the neck of the guitar, I'm using a Fender Telecaster neck that I took from an old guitar that I had laying around. It has a width of about 55mm and a height of approximately 24mm. The neck gets mounted to the body using a neck plate with four screws that go into clearance holes in the 3D print and screw directly into the wood. Now it's time to install the electronics, starting with a 24 gauge ground wire for the bridge. I fed the wire through the hole to the electronics compartment and taped it to the body using Gorilla Tape to hold it in place. The bridge will clamp down on it to provide a path to ground. For the pickups, I'm using a set that I purchased on Amazon. I mounted the bridge pickup to the bridge, fed the wires through the hole, and then fastened the bridge to the body with four screws. Next, I installed the neck pickup mounting plate to the pickup using the included screws and springs and then mounted the assembly to the guitar body. After feeding the wires through the body, I mounted the jack assembly to the body using four small screws. For the guitar strap, I'm using parts from Music Lily that I bought on Amazon. To fasten them to the guitar, I'm using M4 by 20 flathead machine screws and square nuts. After installing the small rubber washer, Simply insert the square nuts into the slots in the body and fasten the strap post into position. Due to my lack of soldering skills, I'm once again using an Obsidian Wire solderless electronics kit which comes with a pre-wired control plate and the output jack which was previously installed. The control plate includes a three-way switch knob, but I decided to 3D print one instead to match the rest of the guitar. Making the wire connections is fairly straightforward as you simply follow the included wiring diagram which shows which wire goes where. The instructions recommend 6 millimeters of exposed wire for a proper connection, and then you simply press down the tab, insert the wire, and release. Don't forget to connect the bridge ground wire which can be inserted into any of the spare ground slots. Then simply mount the electronics assembly to the body using two screws. Lastly, it's time to string up the guitar and then the build is officially complete. Overall, I'm really pleased with how the guitar turned out. For those of you wondering, the final weight of the guitar is a little under 6.5 pounds, which is a bit lighter than a standard electric guitar. That being said, to me the guitar weight is well distributed and feels well balanced in my hands. Now it's time to finally plug it in and see how it plays. I'm certainly not the best person to demonstrate the guitar's sound quality, but here's a quick demo anyways. So hopefully this video was interesting to you. I would encourage anyone who's looking for a fun project to consider building one yourself and adding your own flair to it. I'm already working on several other 3D printed guitars, so stay tuned for more videos and upcoming designs. Also, leave a comment below if you have any suggestions for future designs. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.